Good morning. And a warm welcome to New Cumnock Parish Church. We welcome those who will join us later online and on the phone. Tea and coffee will be served after the service this morning and you're invited to share fellowship there. Mr York is still in hospital, unfortunately, but is feeling much better now. And as you can imagine, he's ready for home. All being well, it will be this coming week. So please keep him and Greta in your prayers. Our intimations are on your intimation sheet, so please read them later. Can I just highlight that Trinity Guild in Cumnock on Tuesday, they're having the Young Musician of the Year there, and you're welcome to go along and so hear this. It's at 1.30, that's Trinity Church on Tuesday, yes, Thursday, sorry, sorry, Thursday um, in Air Road. These are our intimations this morning. Good morning. morning. Let us worship God. We will now stand to sing hymn 512, To God Be the Glory.
Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we do praise you and thank you for all the great things you have done, for bringing the world into existence, filling it with many good things, and breathing life into human beings. We thank you that you were there before the beginning of time, right down the ages, that you are with us now, and you have promised to remain with us and never to leave us. We thank you that when we failed to follow your commands for our good, you loved us so much you sent Jesus, who stood in our place, cancelled our sin, and opened the life gate that we could have the opportunity of entering your kingdom. We thank you that a pardon is received by every believer, no matter what dark secrets they may hold from the past. And so, Lord God, we worship you. We come on this first day of the week to put you first. We come thankful that you are mindful of every one of us. You know more about us than we know ourselves. You are familiar with our circumstances, and yet you love us. Father God, we worship you and approach you with reverence and humility. We are aware there are times we have heard your voice and ignored it, times when we have judged others harshly and not responded to them in the way that we should, times we have been slow to accept that we are wrong, times when we have hurt ourselves and others. Forgive us, Lord, for all that we are that is not worthy of you. May we, with a broken world, Know your touch of healing and restoration. Help us yield to you to work within us for change and to the people you would have us be. Gather us together now with Christians across the world and still our souls, quieten our anxious thoughts as we come into your presence and refocus our lives upon you. We pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning, boys and girls. It's lovely to see you all here this morning. And there's one hiding up the back there, too. Have you been enjoying your, your Easter holidays from school? Yes. You ready to go back tomorrow? Maybe. Maybe. Well, as you can see, Mr. York's still not here. He's still not very well. So I thought it might be good for us to send him a wee message. So we can... Good for you. I think there's other boys and girls done that too. That's lovely. So I thought we could all say together, get well soon, Mr. York, in a loud voice. Will we try that? After three. One, two, three. Get well soon, Mr. York. Good. Have any of you been in a boat before? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got a few pictures of a boat, different boats I'm going to show you this morning. So here's the first one. A pedalo. Have any been, been on that one? You sit on it and belly has, good. You pedal really fast. Yeah, good. The next one. A rowing boat. No, you have to work really hard so you can get across the water. Yeah. And the next one, a ferry, a ferry, yeah. If you're lucky enough, Carl Mack will take you to the place you want to go. Uh-huh, yep. So all these pictures look really good because the water's really calm and really still. But it might not be so good if it's really rough. There's a story in the Bible about Jesus and the boat and I'm going to tell you this wee story. Right? So one day Jesus was with his friends 
and they decided because it was a really nice day, they would go in the boat to the other side of the lake. So they all got in the boat, and Jesus was tired, so he decided to have a wee sleep in the boat. And as Jesus slept, the wind got up, and it started to blow, and big grey clouds appeared. And what happens when there's big grey clouds? It starts to rain, you get lots of rain. And it became really, really windy, really windy, and really stormy with the rain. And Jesus' friends, they were a wee bit frightened. They didn't know what to do. Because you know what? Jesus was still sleeping when all this was going on. Can you imagine sleeping when all that was happening? So they decided to wake Jesus because they were a wee bit scared. They said, Jesus, look at this storm. We're really, we're really frightened here. Can you help us? What can you do? So Jesus got up and he looked up at the wind and the rain. And he said, be still. And you know what happened? The storm disappeared. It became really flat, calm again. The sun came out again. And that's all Jesus did. He said, be still. That's amazing. This storm stopped. So what I want you to remember, that if you are struggling, if you feel frightened, you can speak to Jesus. All you need to do is pray and say, Jesus, help me. Help me at this time because I'm really frightened. I hope you remember that wee story, boys and girls. So we're going to sing a, storm, a song about that with Jesus in the boat. You can smile at the storm. <laughs> Let us listen for the word of God. The first reading is from Psalm 107, verses 23 to 32. Others went out on the sea in ships. There were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, the courage melted away. They, really, they reeled and staggered like drunken men. They were at their wit's end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper 
the waves of the sea was hushed. They were glad when they grew calm, and he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and place him in the council of the elders. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 32. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him. Another said, while he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Before the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, it, Lord if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Thank, be you, thank you, God, for his... Thank you, God, for your word to us today. Oh, we must have. Don't worry, there'll be plenty more. We will now stand and sing hymn 712, O Soul, Are You Weary and Troubled?
Let us bring to God our prayers for others. Father God, we thank you for your word to us, a word which gives us all that is needed to follow you and tells of our Saviour, who when we give our lives to him, gives us the strength and courage and wisdom to do just that. We pray for all those who are sitting in the boat, ones who know of Jesus and why he came, to die for us so that the sin that keeps us from you could be taken away. Give them the courage to reach out in faith and walk in the water by accepting Jesus as their Saviour and Lord, gaining a quality of life they would never have thought possible. The start of a journey of faith led by you and blessed by you. We ask this too for those who have one foot in the boat and the other in the water, and who yearn to take a step of faith. Clear their minds of the clutter in life which distracts them, and help them to see you as of first importance, and everything else following on behind. There are people in other boats we also bring to you. For those who have difficult decisions to make, whether through health issues, family or relationships, work or finances, whatever it may be, help them to always bring their concerns to you first and seek your guidance in the right way ahead so that they may walk out in faith and safety. We ask too for those who are in boats where, like the disciples in the storm, were much afraid. Very real circumstances have them terrified. They cannot move. Just as Peter prayed, Lord, save me, come quickly to them as they cry out to you. Lord God, we come to you thankful that we are not directly involved in the horrific events which are playing out across the world stage. But with our concerns for every troubled spot and the barbaric treatment under which so many are suffering. Be near to those who have been bereaved, to many who have been injured, to families torn apart and displaced, to babies who have been born without any medical assistance and mothers who are struggling to feed them, for babies yet to be born and the grim future which lies ahead. We do pray especially for Ukraine and for the situation in the Middle East, that the wars there would not escalate, that your hand would hold them back, that you may influence the events even of this very day. May peaceful dialogue between nations bring compromise and peace as we bring our fears for the involvement of other nations and we ask for the outworking of your plans in these places. We ask too for our own church and community that we continue to go forward together for the benefit of all. Give all groups and organisations the resources they need to play their part in building up those who attend encouraging them to stretch and grow, to care for one another, and to forge strong relationships through common interests. Heavenly Father, we have gathered here in your name. We are thankful for your presence, and we ask for your blessing upon us and those whom we love and need our prayers. We pray very much for our minister and friend, Reverend Ken. We thank you for all he does in church and community. We thank you too for good improvement in his health and pray for his continuing recovery. Be close to him and Greta and the family at this time. We now bring out the concerns that we have for ourselves and for others to you now. <coughs> As we have cried out to you, bring us and those whom we have prayed for out of distress. Still the storm and hush the waves. Bring peace and a calm and guide us all into safe haven. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We remain seated to sing the modern version of the Lord's My Shepherd.
As you can see, I'm wavering a wee bit here um, because we're going on a journey this morning in a boat. So you've got plenty of wood in front of you, so hold on, cling tight if the waves get a bit choppy. Our focus this morning is going to be in our reading from the New Testament where Jesus and Peter walk on water. But first, I would like to tell you a wee story. And where I'm concerned, some of you know it might turn into a big story. Once there was a tourist who was taking a tour of the biblical sites. He came to a beach on the Sea of Galilee and a boat was docked there. And he saw a sign advertising a free trip to the exact spot where Jesus and Peter walked on water. So he boarded and enjoyed the ride to the middle of the lake. The captain stopped the boat and announced that where they were was indeed the very place where the miraculous event had taken place. The tourists spent a few minutes there and then asked the captain to return them back to shore. The captain then pointed to the sign that showed the trip was free to come out to the spot in the water where they were. Turning the sign round, the other side stated the ride back to shore was 50 pounds. The tourist Shocked by the charge, exclaimed, No wonder Peter got out and walked. But seriously, most of us will be familiar with this story from Matthew's Gospel. But why and how was water walking possible? And most importantly, what can we learn from it? Interestingly enough, Matthew's Gospel is the only one that records this incident with Peter. Mark and John both tell the story of Jesus walking on water, but neither, neither of them mention Peter's involvement. So let's pick up our story in Matthew 14 at verse 22. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side of the lake, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. This particular incident happened directly after Jesus had fed 5,000 men, plus women and children. Here we see Jesus not asking the disciples to get into the boat, it was a direct command. Jesus had plans for them. He then retreated alone to pray. It had been a heavy day and he recognised his need for quality time with his Father. As he prayed about the coming night and the up and coming preaching, teaching and healing to be done on the other side of the lake, and sometimes we think we can get by without prayer. So the disciples clambered aboard the boat as they had been told to do and pushed out onto the lake. This is what a Galilean boat would have looked like all these years ago. It was just over 26 feet long, seven and a half feet wide and four and a half feet high. The twelve were sitting in a boat which could hold fifteen maximum. Off they went, and then things started to take a turn for the worse. The Sea of Galilee was notorious for how quickly the weather could change. Being about 680 feet below sea level, what happens is that cold air rushes down from the hills to meet the warm air rising from the water. The result is a sudden and violent storm, and this one 
wasn't going to subside in a hurry. From the way the Bible describes it, the storm must have hit about 8 p.m. that night and continued until somewhere between 3 and 6 o'clock in the morning. The disciples had been struggling against the wind and the rain for eight or nine exhausting hours in a vessel being tossed about like a matchstick barely holding up. Stuck in the middle of the lake, they were drenched, weary, chilled to the bone, and wondering if they could possibly make the shore alive. Can we taste the raw fear within that boat? Just when hope was possibly about to go, all of a sudden, they see what they think is a figure on the water, walking on top of it. Through the wind and rain and the utter darkness, they did not recognize Jesus. They thought it was a ghost. And terrified, they cried out in fear. Jesus spoke to them saying, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Perhaps he could have added, Why are you surprised? You saw me feed a lot of people today from very little. The very last thing I would have been thinking of saying was what Peter did. Realizing that this may well be Jesus, he asked him to confirm his identity by allowing him to walk out towards him on the water. Jesus said, come. So Peter left the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. So for a moment or two, there they were, Peter and Jesus walking on water. Peter experienced what Jesus could do as master of the waves and in defiance of the law of physics. Over the years, some people have criticized Peter and reacted negatively to what he did. Some have said he was conceited and was showing off others that he was impulsive or headstrong. I don't believe Peter was any of these things. Had he jumped out of the boat without permission from Jesus? Yes, we probably would decide that was a very foolish thing to do. Peter only moved out of the boat when Jesus told him to. In some respects, I wish the story ended here but we all know what happened next. In Matthew 14, verse 30, we read, When he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. When Peter was walking on water, walking away from the boat, walking towards Jesus, everything was going great. Then came the but. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. The reality of what he had done set in. He took his eye off of Jesus and focused on the very real raging storm. How long did it take him to start sinking? He sank immediately. The storm never stopped raging while Peter was walking on the water. The wind was still blowing, the rain was pouring down, and the waves were tossing them around. It only took a second for Peter to sink because he stopped concentrating on Jesus. How easy it is for us to be distracted by life with its storms and challenges, and when we do, our faith can waver. When through faith we keep our eyes firmly upon Jesus, we can have peace and power even when the storm is raging all around us. When Peter began to sink, he immediately cried out for Jesus to help him. 
Peter prayed one of the shortest prayers in the Bible. Lord, save me. Sometimes when things happen quickly, there isn't time for a long prayer. But prayers don't need to be long and detailed. They just need to come from the heart. No sooner had Peter spoken his prayer than Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him. He said, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the storm died down. Jesus rebuked Peter for his lack of trust in him. But I wonder what his tone of voice was. Was it really totally negative? I think we can put in a good word for Peter here. At least he got out of the boat. He was... Sorry. He was willing to step out in faith. He maybe failed, but he did go so far. He gained the reassurance that from there on, his faith would continue to grow as he trusted Jesus all the more. After one unsuccessful attempt, Sir Edmund Hillary once shook his fist defiantly at the bottom of Mount Everest and said, I will defeat you yet. You are as big as you're going to get, but I am still growing. He climbed and failed several times. And every time he failed, he learned, he grew, and tried again. And one day, he did not fail. So it is with our journey of faith. As we trust ever more in God, in the ups and downs of life, and see him working, our faith strengthens and develops. And what of the other 11 disciples in the boat? Some may think they were a bunch of wimps with no faith at all, but they were holding on by their fingernails. Was the boat really a safer place to be? How would we react in their situation? Would we have jumped at the chance and accompanied Peter, or would we have held back and said, I am not a celebrity, but please get me out of here? Or maybe, I might go second, but let me think about it. Certainly this demonstration of Jesus' power would have had a profound effect on all of them and their trust in Jesus. Two miracles performed before their very eyes within 24 hours and more to come. The disciples were learning and being built up firsthand with their Savior. For countless others down the ages, we read Jesus' words in John chapter 20 at verse 29 where he says, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Jesus had shown his power in demonstrating how he could control the wind and the waves. This is something we also read about in the Old Testament, power then only attributed to God himself. In our reading today, in verses 28 to 30 of Psalm 107, the psalmist says, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm, and he guided them to their desired haven. 
The Christian life is an adventure in which we step into the unknown and walk by faith. Stepping out can be risky, but to walk on water, you have to get out of the boat. We live in this world with the same issues and problems as everyone else. But with Jesus on our side, we have a totally different way of handling all that comes our way. Is God calling us to step out of our boat and trust him with our lives? The weather will be changeable ahead. And as we walk by faith and keep our eyes firmly on the Lord, I pray that God will help us to continue to walk on the waters of faith as we trust in his power to carry us through the storms. Amen. Our offering will now be uplifted. Let us pray. Lord God, we come to you now to give you our thanks and praise. We thank you for the opportunity to come and meet as a church family. We thank you that you are always beside us in every storm, and even when the sun shines there too, you are there. Lord, at this time, we give back to you a token of our love given in the offering plate and also by standing order. Bless and use this money for the church here in this place. Lord, hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. We will stand and sing our final hymn this morning while your anchor hold.
May God go with us out into this week. May we know his presence with us, his loving arms around us, and his influence upon us. And now may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with us and with all whom we love today and always. Thank you.